Hello people, in this video we want to look at Bucheraria bancrofti, okay? So basically what is Bucheraria bancrofti? It is this worm, right? It is a nematode. It is a helminth, a nematode. It is a filarial worm, okay? It causes filariasis. In the extreme form, this will be called as elephantiasis where you can see this kind of non-pitting type of edema will be present. You can see this is elephantiasis, right? This is also called as Malabar leg, okay? So basically people who live by the river, by the uh, uh, sea, they are prone to getting this uh, infection of area bancrofti, okay? So basically we are studying parasitology. This is going to be a parasite, right? Parasitology. We are reading parasites about parasites. So basically, Vucheraria bancrofti, did you get an idea what it is? It is a helminth nematode filarial worm that causes this disease, filariasis, elephantiasis, occult filariasis, a lot of things. Okay. So we will try to explain the entire thing about Vucheraria bancrofti using this diagram. Okay. So basically, you can see here. There, are, there is a line here in the middle. This side, whatever is representing, this is the mosquito part and here you have the man part. Okay. So basically, the for Vucheraria bancrofti, in the life cycle, you can see the definitive host is man and the intermediate host is the culex mosquito. Okay. So did you understand this much? The definitive host is man. Here the multiplication is happening, right? So basically, definitive host is man and the intermediate host is going to be a mosquito. Which mosquito? Culex mosquito. This Culex now very specifically they have mentioned Culex fatigans. Okay. So let's start off with the man getting the infection. So look at this man here. See he got bit by an infected mosquito. A Culex mosquito. This is Indian scenario. He came, the Culex mosquito bit him. So, this Culex mosquito in the proboscis, it had the third stage filary form larva, which is actively motile. This is the infective form of Pucheraria bancrofti, which is the infective form. The third stage filary form larva, which is actively motile. You can see it's quite a big larva and it will be present in the mosquito's proboscis. A lot of them have to be present actually to infect man and it is going to penetrate the skin, right? Here we will destroy some of the larva ourselves, but some of them do make it to the lymph nodes. So did you understand here? So the third stage infective filary form larva, which is actively motile from the proboscis it, of the uh, Culex mosquito, which has bitten this man. Now it enters, okay, it uh, whatever got destroyed from our immune system got destroyed. But the remaining, they will come and enter the lymph nodes. What are they attacking? The lymph nodes, okay. Now pay attention here. In the lymph node, what will happen? This third stage filariform larva, they will become adult worms. They will sexually mature in six months and they will start multiplying. So six months you have no, you don't know. Six months it is staying there, it is developing into adult worm. Okay. Then they will start multiplying. Once they start multiplying, here these are viviparis. They are going to lay microfilariae. No eggs here. Please pay attention here. There are no eggs here. It is going to lay what is called as microfilariae. Okay. So these area bancrofti are what? They are viviparis. So where this microfilaria will be, there will they will be there in the lymph. Okay, they will be in the lymph. Okay. So this microfilaria itself, the structure is so very uh, interesting, right? This is a sheet, this black color, what you see is a sheet. Inside it you have the larva. Okay. So this, now what happens? If you want, we can explain the structure of this microfilaria also. How to distinguish the microfilaria of the uh, Bucheraria bancrofti from the microfilaria of the other worms. This is also important. We'll come to that. As of now, let's not get deviated with the structure of microfilaria. Let's move on now. Now, what happens? Uh, this, no, this is where, where is it? It's in the lymph. No. So, obviously, it will drain, let us say, into the thoracic duct. And then it will uh, enter the blood, okay. 
and that too when it will enter the blood you know only when the person sleeps more than saying nocturnal na only when the person sleeps it will enter the blood right and when this mosquito bites this person this if it is bites in the night or when he is sleeping that time this mosquito picks up these microfilariae notice here that the microfilariae they can't do anything until it reaches the mosquito they just can't do anything in the human beings they just stay as microfilariae and then they die but only if they want to become something they have to enter the mosquito okay how is it going so far guys did you understand what is happening we finished the man part the mosquito bit the man then uh, what happened the mosquito bit the man from there to lymph node there adult worms you got then these multiplied they gave the microfilaria so microfilaria will actually be inside a sheath they will be inside the sheath like this right these microfilaria they will just stay in the lymph only when it is night or when the person is sleeping they will come to the blood otherwise they won't come to the blood they will be there only so in the blood there will be there Uh, this is rbc we have tried to draw in between we are showing you this microfilaria only in the night or in the when the person sleeps they come to the blood and now what happens here a new mosquito has to come and bite this man okay so that time from the blood mean this mosquito can pick up the microfilaria so far so good man part is done okay in man itself the multiplication reproduction all these progeny everything has been made in man okay now this microfilaria has to go mature and come back okay let's see how it is happening so now let us see what happens in the mosquito so have you seen so far that what happens in the man man we have covered now we are moving on to the mosquito which is an intermediate host that's the culex mosquito now look at this here we'll try to zoom in here it enters the mosquito so the mosquito is biting the man here let's take a different color for mosquito which color shall we take for mosquito which color is mosquito gray let's take a gray or a black black okay so this mosquito is biting this man this man is now infected right now what this mosquito will do it will pick up these microfilaria these microfilaria once they get picked up they will excrete they'll come out of their sheath in the stomach of the mosquito it will penetrate the stomach of the mosquito can you see there is a larva coming out here wait let's zoom so we have zoomed here hope you can see now so basically this mosquito is biting this man and mosquito is picking up the microfilaria right now in the mosquito the excreting of this filari uh, filarial microfilaria happens okay so it will excrete then what has come out that is in the stomach of the mosquito it will penetrate the stomach of the mosquito and it will reach the muscle thoracic muscle it will reach how how much of you are clear about what is happening in the mosquito is it difficult to understand so basically in the mosquito if this microfilaria will excrete it will penetrate the wall of the mosquito and reach the thoracic muscles that's all <clears throat> then now look at what has happened so here once it has reached the thoracic muscle of the mosquito then first stage larva second stage larva third stage infected form larva that's all so it's very easy here the then it becomes the infective form again in the mosquito that's all so infective form is active actively motile it is third stage filary form larva which is the infective form for man and after this the entire cycle will continue that's all guys this is bucheraria bancrofti so in man what and all it will cause in man what and all it will cause you know it will cause uh, filariasis in filariasis itself there are two types of filariasis there is uh, classic filariasis and occult filariasis classic filariasis means where the lymph etc are affected uh, uh here in occult filariasis there's actually hypersensitivity to the antigen of these worms okay so guys look at what exactly are the clinical manifestations there can be classic filariasis and occult filariasis under classic filariasis basically you will see 
acute adenolymph angitis okay so here this is uh, characterized uh, this is characterized characterized by lymph angitis lymph adenitis lymph edema lymph angiovarix okay so the lymph 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 everything lymph is affected okay so lymph angitis like inflamed lymph vessels so the in lymph vessels let's say this is a lymph vessel let's take a purple here lymph so lymph vessels are inflamed right this lymph angitis then inflammation of lymph aden uh, lymph node will be lymph adenitis lymph node will be inflamed means lymph adenitis lymph edema means what swellings right basically swellings so there will be initially it will be pitting type of edema then there will be non pitting edema then lymph angiovarix means dilatation of these lymph vessels okay so that is lymph angiovarix all these will happen in classic filariasis also there can be hydrocel hydrocel means the lymph vessels to the spermatic cord are obstructed so there will be exudation from the inflamed testis and epididymis okay what is lymphorrhagia so leaking lymph is lymphorrhagia okay so basically let us say from this uh, lymph vessel all the lymph is leaking it can be either seen in the urine or it can be seen as uh, diarrhea so there can be chylus chylus you can say chylus diarrhea or chylus diarrhea chylus chyl urine so everywhere there is lymph okay finally they are talking about elephantiasis so basically it is a last thing that they are mentioning is elephantiasis this is a delayed sequel to repeated lymphangitis obstruction lymphedema this is non pitting edema you can see here elephantiasis right the swelling in the leg etc probably the name is because it's like an elephant's leg or uh, it is so swollen it is so big right so lastly we will move on to occult filariasis what is occult filariasis because here in occult filariasis basically there is a, a reaction a hypersensitivity reaction to the antigens which these worms carry right here there is they are not talking about the lymph obstruction by these worms or something like that this is hypersensitivity to the antigens of these worms okay main thing that there will be there in this is the eosinophil eosinophilia so eosinophils will be more eosinophilia will be there ige it's an allergic reaction so hypersensitivity reaction so ige asthmatic cough asthmatic cough right all these are standard things that you will write asthmatic wheezing cough dyspnea dyspnea right standard things that you will write with any allergic reaction okay so the lymphatic filariasis are absent so classic features of this lymphatic uh, filariasis are absent classic features are absent guys uh, we have to also cover the treatment right treatment is what dec diethyl what is this diethyl carbamazine citrate right this is the drug of choice for filariasis diethyl carbamazine citrate dec is the drug of choice for uh, filariasis remember we still have a lot to cover like the lab diagnosis we have to cover guys lab diagnosis and structure of microfilaria also we want to cover what microfilarias are and how they are different in different worms so those are all very specific to microbiology you can come back for those videos what you have seen in this video is very generic buchereria bancrofti the life cycle uh, things like uh, the pathogenesis etc so come back for the next video we will look at this uh, microfilaria of bancrofti the structure etc okay that's all for now guys see you in the next video bye bye